so if you haven't met Ryan or talked to Ryan, this is Ryan. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so check, he's check. our he's our community manager, and he does a wonderful job on social. So all the tweets and posts and everything that you see, um, he's actually an inspiration for the behind the scenes at AZ Tech Beat at Instagram. Um, so he's boosted up our audience there. It's been very cool. What do you need? Um, it's been very cool to see that emerge and kind of do some fun behind the scenes. And we did a lot of that at CES. So he launched that heavily at CES. I'm so excited for him. So some of you might have followed CES through uh, another medium, hopefully ours. But um, these are some things that were behind the scenes. So we're going to show you some that you probably already saw and you know about, but some that were kind of fun and cool. And it, it was massive. And for Ryan, it was it's really a rite of passage for any media tech reporter to do this. And it's, it's underestimated. Would you like to comment on the experience? Uh, yeah, I'd never been to something like that. I think one of the conferences that I've been to at like Phoenix Convention Center, I mean, this was just way too big and so many people and people just you know, coming up to us and asking me and Janelle, because I would partner up with Janelle, and I had so many people talking to us, and then by the last day, I'm standing by the bathroom, and I'm defeated, and I'm just like, we're going to the airport soon, we're coming home. I'm like, come on, I'm Millennial, being get up. People are coming up to me, still <laughs> pitching, and yeah, it was Yeah, a somebody lot. pitched you actually fun. outside the bathroom. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> so, um, it, it definitely... It, it's one of those things where you don't sleep, you know, you, you go 14, 15 hours. We would start, we would end our day at 10 p.m. and then, you know, then the, the meetings start again. So you meet the founders after that as well. So just a little bit about this. Uh, 3,600 exhibitors from up from 3,200, 2.2 million square feet of exhibit space up from 1.9. Yes, we covered it all. Um, 30, 375 startups from 220, over 200,000 people. The gaming exhibits alone were 30% higher than last year, and the revenues that were that are expected to reach um, 223.2 billion dollars, and what we saw on the floor that will all gener be generated this year. The emerging tech that was that identified was that you see there, and 11 billion out of the total uh, revenue for consumer electronics will be from these emerging tech items. So even though you kind of maybe know about these emerging techs and you've seen them, and we did see them kind of blow up um, at this year, um, it, it they're still going. So here's our team. There's us in the press room. Um, I think this was, we were still good. We were good that day. Day one, maybe. There was, no, day two or something. <laughs> or day two. We were OK. <laughs> this was pretty good. Yeah. Um, the survival pack that I suggest um, is that you need, that's really emphasized, and I can't even stress that enough. But this is kind of this, the gear that you need to survive CES. Um, I don't think I missed, missed your phones. You notice how food really isn't on there. So we didn't really count that as a necessity. So wearables were really were blown up. Everybody had a wearable, and I want to call it the Me Too factor. And people say, oh, what was the best wearable? And I said, really, what you have probably is working for you unless you want to add some things. The big secret is whoever's going to have the, all of it in one device and it's connected to your smartphone is going to win. So what I noticed is there was some specialization coming out of it that I, that I liked. And the first one at the top is the um, oxo, oxometers. So this is Stig Severson, who actually is the World Guinness Book of Records um, for um, deep diving, I think it was, natural diving. So he's, he's been underwater for 22 minutes. That was the world record. So I met him, and he actually, I, I, we had a great conversation because he actually helps some of the, the big wave surfers. And so some of them that if you follow any surfing like I do, he works with them so that if they have a hold down or anything that is, could be life-threatening, then he can help with that. But why he liked this one is that this is by Massimo. And this is the oximeter that if you've been to the doctor or a hospital and you put the thing on your finger and it checks your blood pressure, then this is actually a personalized device So for oximeter. So if you run in extreme conditions, you're in triathletes or anything, or you just want to keep track of your oxygen levels, then this is a great tool that I suggest uh, for that. Or if there's circulation issues, and that's a great health tool as well. The one below here is called the June, and that's the sun exposure. This is the second generation. We saw that CES last year, but I don't know why more people don't have this, because it regulates how much sun exposure you have, and it will send you a notification on your phone saying, hey, you're, you've had too many UVA, UVB rays. And for here in the Southwest, I think that's really important. Again, if somebody can morph that into a watch or something like that, they're going to win with that technology. What so is the, that? 
they're getting smarter. <laughs> so, um, this is this is called the June, and is it a watch or a belt? it's a bracelet actually. It's not. A, unfortunately, they don't have kind of a male version coming out right now, which I was kind of disappointed. But those are these are about 110 and up. And wearables are definitely becoming more fashion forward for the men. This is um, with things. I, I like this watch because it had it tracked everything. It was a little more fashion forward. And for women, um, this is a crystal actually. Um, Misfit hooked up with Swarovski crystal. So the technology is actually in the crystal itself. And so you can change out the crystal into a pendant, to a watch, there's silicone, you know, if you want to work out, and it provides all the same data as a Misfit. The next gen of Misfit is actually a blue eco crystal where it will uh, harness the sun's energy and then power it. So it's pretty cool. And I have that up on Easy Tech Beat. Moving on to 3D printing, that was still ridiculous. Like everyone had a 3D printer, but the main features I pulled out of it are the new filaments that are coming out. So you're going to be able to print in stone, metal, wood, carbon fiber, and of course food. And you may have seen the GigaLife food, the, the GigaLife, you know, with the, the Coxes. Yeah, that's definitely happening. So the main, this is actually a 3D printed hammer that actually works. This is a wood, this is a metal. So you'll be able to really print your tools or whatever you need in real time. And the filaments are coming out later this year, and I don't have pricing on that. An example of some of the things I saw, that's kind of, you're going to be able to maybe design your own thing. So the artist at Within can come out and print whatever you want to decorate your home with or something. And up there is a 3D printed eyewear. So you'll be able to create your own design and then put your lenses in it. So those are not cheap right now. Those are like over $300 to do that. The other crazy 3D, that is actually frosting, if you look at that. So it's totally wild. Um, it's like a fondant kind of thing. So food was there, um, and Hershey's is actually paired up with 3D systems. And you may have heard about printing chocolate stuff. They now just release kind of like the, called it the Coco Jet. So you can basically, so I'm just trying to like, can I get a Coco Jet for Valentine's Day and print up <laughs> something and make this happen? So that was a, uh, we featured this on, um, on the last Saturday's um, segment. So, whoops, this is getting ahead of me. All right, so home automation, everybody had home automation. Everyone had a smart this and smart that to their, you know, integrate. Oh, I integrate with the Nest. Oh, I integrate with everything. So again, just like wearables, anything, if you can find a system that integrates into your to existing systems and it's easy to do, they're gonna win. Obviously, everyone's trying to integrate with the Nest, but that's just not, that's not everything. What I'm seeing is a decrease in pricing, so it's affordable, easy integration to what you already have. So this one that I really liked is the Natamo, and the, the difference in home automation now is that it has facial recognition technology. And so basically, it's gonna know who comes into your house before you do, and it will send a notification to your phone. So if you wanna say, okay, um, my son, I'm gonna give him a profile, the camera will identify my son when he walks in, do a facial recognition, send it to my phone, so-and-so is here. Somebody that you don't know enters your home, it does not have a profile, it will then also send you a notification, I don't know who this person is. You can also see it on your phone. Okay, I see my son walking in, there he is, yes, I've identified him and everything. So that's kind of the next generation of home automation I, I really like. That transfers into the smart doorbell, which I'm a huge fan of, this is Ring, it used to be DoorBot, and they upgraded to Ring. And this has um, a camera that has night vision, um, I think some facial recognition, but that's the next gen. And it has a microphone, a speaker, so if someone comes to your door, your work, check it out on your phone. The delivery person, yeah, just leave it over here, whatever, and you can have that communication. Or for my kids, if they stay at home and somebody comes to the door, then I feel that's safe, it'll alert them, they can see who's on the door, uh, at the door. The next one is Zuli, which is a smart plug. Um, so basically, if you leave something on or you want on or off, you can manage everything from your phone. Again, this becomes all integrated. There's too many apps going on. Like, okay, I need an app for my doorbell. I need an app for my phone. I need an app for them. And again, if once everything mashes together and you can do it from one app or less than three apps, then you're going to win. So everyone loves their pets. That was also another wonderful thing. Um, I think so the next emerging, emerging area. Uh, kids tech as well. I saw a lot more. So the one up top is actually the first greet and treat mechanism. 
So you can talk to your dog or your pet at home. You can activate a treat. You can give them a treat from a distant, from your phone. You give them a treat. It's amazing, right? So yeah, it's pretty cool. There's other things out there. You can talk to your pet through your phone and have that interaction during the day. But giving them a treat was another kind of cool aspect if you wanted to do that. The Tractive 2 is the second gen to track your dog's activity. If they go out of a certain range, it will alert your phone. Big fan of those if you leave your dog like out in the backyard or you have people coming and going in your house or whatever. Or if you have a lot of kids and there's a lot of activity, then you know if your dog has left the home or left the safe area. Another area that was, I think, underreported was the eye tracking technology. This is really ramping up and to be able to do things just with your eye. So at one of the, one of the, um, one of the uh, showstoppers, thank you, this mechanism right here is going to be, can be added to an iPad and you can begin to play games or maneuver or do whatever you want with your eye. This is, I think this is about between 90 or $190 and quote me. I have to check that my stats on that, but uh, people can buy this and integrate the software into whatever um, they want. So he have ended up playing Fruit Ninja with his eyes, and I think this is amazing just to be able to do this. For the, the medical purposes, it's wonderful for those. But it's, you're gonna be able to basically do a lot. You can control your TV with your eyes or some gestures at some point, it's coming. And I think it was an underreported area we have a couple more examples of that a little bit later. Same with eye tracking gesture control is another thing. Basically, we're just going to we can only have to do this. This is all we're going to have to do, like <laughs> from the couch. We can do, and I think my joke was at the end of CES is that we really can be fully lazy after this. We really don't have to get up from the couch. We can turn, I mean, there's robots, they'll bring us beer. You can turn the tea, you don't even, you just go like that, little dinosaurs, and you can have everything done. <laughs> So gesture control, um, as you probably know on the TV, that's, that's also kind of a new feature that's coming. But one of the cool things I'm seeing in kids tech are gesture controls. And this is actually a mood changing dinosaur. So the little ball that you saw on the side, it would actually follow the ball. You can change the mood to kind of more like a dog, to a little more aggressive. It'll come after the ball, it'll chase the ball. And these gesture control toys, which you might have seen on the market or known about them, they're becoming Part, part of the lifestyle, and kids are going to be playing with these gesture control um, kind of robots a little bit more. One of the exclusive um, shows I went to is called Showstoppers. It's where um, national media is invited to, and I was one of the many few smaller publications invited to this where companies, um, they host a, a booth here or they showcase their stuff, and they have a lot more time to kind of for, for media reporters to digest their information, they might get picked up a little bit more. Um, like TechCrunch and a bunch of other ones had their own kind of media source back there. So it was pretty cool to um, meet and greet a lot of people. Showstoppers also has a lot of unique and weird stuff. So this one was actually robotic legs. And I watched a paraplegic actually walk. It was amazing with these robotic legs. And this one was a kind of a mobile um, game controller that comes, a, comes apart. It looks transformer-ish. And Elio was there. They have their headquarters here in Arizona. It's the second time he is here. And this, this neurotech, actually you put it on your brain and I was able to move a car. It was bizarre. So it's taking your brain waves and creating energy from it and doing stuff with it. The other wonky thing was the two-sided phone. So this is out of London. It's in London. It's not here yet, but this is a fully functioning Android-based phone. And this is, it looks very first-gen Kindle, fully customizable um, phone. So you flip it over, do what you can, flip it back over, and you have the screen. I don't know why I'd use it, but it's, it just looks really cool. Why not? So Ryan's going to talk a little bit about 4K, but everything is about life in 4K. Yeah, because so I think the that's our next standard from going up from like HGTV or 1080p or whatever it is 
not just with TVs, also with cameras. So like the one up there, we, we did some Nikon, we saw some Nikons and they were, you want to see like home videos in 4K on your 4K TV. You don't want to like take a low definition video of your son's soccer game. You want to, if you get a 4K TV. And um, some of the cool cameras, like we saw this really cool Instagram camera. Well, it was from Polaroid, but I call it Instagram because it looked exactly like the logo. It was kind of bulky, very weird to use, but it was right there. It had the Wi-Fi built in, data, plan, or whatever, so you could just upload straight from there. So I think that's where it's also going, where cameras are also going to have that capability to just upload straight from the camera. But I mean, we do that from our phones anyway. So, um, and action cams. Action cams were cool. Casio, which they aren't releasing the version that we saw here in the States, but it's um, Asia and all across the international place. Um, but action cams are the coolest stuff, not just GoPros, but some more discrete things where you can have the clicker in your pocket and you can attach the other like camera here or attach it somewhere up high and you can just click it and you don't need a selfie stick anymore. So, And, well, and then now TVs, they're amazing. Um, we got to see an 8K TV. It only demoed like a few, like for a few minutes and then it would go off and then LG would like come over to you with like a camera and mic and say, hey, we want to know your thoughts. And it was insane and packed. Um, I think one of the coolest parts about it is that the, the picture is some, like, we've never seen anything like it before, but the bad thing is that um, prices are still very high. They, uh, this year, they are dropping prices in last year's models, and of course, that's going to happen, but um, it's not there yet. The pricing is not there yet, because it's still 10000 and above for um, probably 55-inch, 65. And they say for 4K, you definitely want 55 or 55 inches or higher, because something for 4K on a, a smaller TV doesn't equate to what you want to be able to see. Yeah, and the thinnest TV, you guys saw the thinnest oh, TV. Oh yeah, this one right here, I think. Um, the thinnest TV, it was like, it's smaller than the iPhone. Like it's... Thinner. Thinner, thinner, thinner than the iPhone. 4.9 millimeters. It's, um, yeah, crazy. Like, I don't know how they did it. So moving on to drones, my uh, the favorite part of drones was that they're gonna stalk you and they're gonna be your, your new best friend. <laughs> So this is the Air Dog. It actually won an award at CES because it folds up. It has an auto follow. That's kind of the next trend. So another one that I have is called Trace. You're going to see this story on uh, up today, but this one basically will follow you. Right now they have they're they're again beta mode right now, but this black strip that you're going to see right now has to in beta mode has to be on the user and it will follow. It'll track uh, lock into the user right now, but. It's pretty freakish, but it's really cool for the action adventure goer that wants to, you know, follow them. Another one that is Ghost. Um, that's another one that's it go. The, the battery's a little bit longer. Again, it's GoPro ready. Um, it goes up to uh, 0.6 miles away. Um, again, it, it has stabilization video qualities. It has auto follow, and it has a new app that has a tilt uh, combination that you can tilt or turn, and it, you can just do that with your phone instead of with the joysticks that used to be right now. So for the professional, they're getting bigger and massive, and the Amazon autocopter, definitely, I saw those. It's, it's absolutely happening. It's being used in professional use for land, uh, just decking out the landscape, for construction. Um, Homeland Security is using them, and now professionals, photographers. There were over 19 Arizona companies represented at CES, and we had the pleasure of talking and interviewing many of them. Um, this, this was the AIG. This was a personalized server, and he, he was in here. We've done a story on them. This is iTribe with Cicadas. This is an eye tracking, um, eye tracking device as well. And we have MyFuelUp. What do they do? You My, MyFuelUp app, they, you can create like um, around your own diet and like schedule they create with through their app a personalized exercise and diet plan and they help you grocery shop and stuff like that it's a cool lifestyle fitness app um, a subwoofer company out of Gilbert quietly they've been they're a mega source in actually Latin America they actually launched here at US and think is a neuro wearable a pro former uh, professor at ASU um, doing neurotechnology has created this wearable we could not show it it's still in stealth mode but I did have a private demo of it and so you have a little mechanism here, comes onto the back of your ear, and you can either choose calm or energy mode, and I needed energy that day. 
I can swear to you, and they can attest to this, that I looked like a total mess in the beginning, and then I went to the demo, and I was just rock solid all day. I was totally. I know. I really like. She looked amazing. I wanted to try it. I was like, because I want another. I called and I said, Can I get another hit of that? I was whatever tired. that. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That sink stuff was. I wanted. So of course you go to CS and you have to see totally weird things and that should never be on the market ever. So um, these are called rocket skates, and if you can just see the problem that you're gonna have with these, like ankle ankle breaking. ankle ankle rocket skates, like not really roller skates, but there was a woman who. She shouldn't have been on it, and I was, and I, I was like, this video could go viral if she falls, and then I pulled back and I said I should probably go back to work. But anyway, so that was weird. Other kind of weird and wild things. Everyone wanted a, like a smart toothbrush, which is the stupidest thing. I don't know. Everyone had a, I don't get it. So yeah, if you want to have a smart toothbrush, that's cool. Um, Ryan, do you want to talk about Sculpt? Yeah, Sculpt. It's just this device that you place against your skin and then it measures the oxygen and your like muscle, muscle. quality. Um, it, I mean, it, she, it was a quick demo. She put it on my skin and on my arm and told me my levels, but I didn't really know what to do with those. So they have like stats, 30 so. data points. You, put, you can put them all over. Yeah. You can like do all this point. If you want to get a full understanding of like your bicep awesomeness, then you can do that. Okay, this one was for all, everyone at home, this, this one rocked. This is the LG, go ahead, you guys saw oh, that. Oh, I loved this. This is amazing. This is a little like Valentine's Day gift. tiny washer underneath, in the drawer underneath the big washer. So they, they gave the example of if you go to the gym pretty often, but you only have like three or four outfits, this is the perfect little washer so that you don't have to use um, more energy in this one. Um, they do say if you use both at the same time, that is more energy than what you would, you know, for a normal wa uh, load. But um, I thought it was pretty cool. And then this other washer with a sink at, at the top, and then you lift the other lid, and the water will just dump down into the big basin. But you can rinse something out real quick and then dispose of the water right down into the, into the big. It's pretty cool. Okay. And that's it. Oh.